Hello and welcome to the Global Dialogue. I'm Shireen Bhan. Joining me now is the global CEO of Johnson Control, George Oliver, a company that's made it its business to create healthy and sustainable buildings. Always a pleasure. It's, it's great to have you back in India. It's great to see you again, Shireen, and uh, looking forward to a great dialogue. You know, it's been a while since you last visited India. I think what the last visit was about five years ago. Uh, you've, you've met with some government ministers. Uh, you've done a partnership with the Mahindra Group. You talk about how you believe India is on the cusp of a building revolution. Talk to me about the India opportunity. Yeah, it starts with understanding what Johns Controls is all about. You know, we are the leading building solutions, commercial building solutions provider across the globe. Uh, foundation to our strategy is leadership systems. That could be HVAC, controls, fire and security, and then how those systems get deployed with one digital platform, which is our open blue um, platform. And then with the use of the data, that combined with the equipment, then we create outcomes that ultimately change how buildings operate. And by doing so, we can make buildings much more sustainable and you can reduce energy being consumed 30, 40, 50 percent. At the same time, you're elevating the air quality uh, of the building, which contributes to health and wellness, productivity. Um, and then ultimately, that same digital platform is what changes the occupant experience uh, within the building. And so what we've learned here, you know, obviously sustainability, you're driving the energy transition here in India is a priority. Mm -hmm. And so as we've aligned what we can do and, and aligned with industry leaders like Mahindra, we put together a framework which is getting to net zero buildings initiative uh, with Mahindra and, and that we've laid out the, the roadmap to how, you know, sustainable build, buildings now are not only designed, but then how they're built and then executed over the life cycle. And the combination of their depth and expertise with ours really has enabled us now to really look at that full value mm -hmm. on creation over the life cycle of a building. And that has set the stage for what can be possible. And when you look at the built environment here, contrary to the rest of the world, 70% of the built environment in the rest of the world is going to be in operation in 2050. So all of the commitments that have been made by governments and by companies to get to net zero, it's going to require upgrading the existing built environment, deploying digital and changing the outcomes. What's unique here is three quarters of the building stock that will be in operation in 2050 is actually still to be built. Mm -hmm. So it's an incredible opportunity to leapfrog, to be able to deploy technology that exists today, to be able to utilize digital and the use of the data to fundamentally change buildings for the future. And so that's what's exciting about the work that we're doing on Mahindra. Uh, you know, on the uh, partnership with Mahindra, it is a non-commercial partnership that you have. But what do you intend to do with this toolkit? I mean, is it going to be monetizable at some point? So what we've learned, and that's why Mahindra and, and John's Controls, we, we share a lot of the values and, and the work that we're doing around sustainability, and that's what brought us together. And we also participate on different or organizations like the Sustainable Markets Initiative, uh, working with CEOs within the building space across the globe, and really now having set the stage and defining what is possible. Because there's a lot of technology that mm. exists today that can be deployed and get you a significant way to getting to net zero just by addressing buildings. Buildings represent 40% of the global carbon. And so that you don't get to net zero yeah. without solving for buildings. And so what we've done is the work that we've done together with them in these groups is to then take what we've learned put it together into a framework, and then we can we can be not only the thought leaders, but the ability to be able to then convert and to deploy that technology more broadly across the markets. And that's what our intent is. And we've now set the stage. We believe that there is a lot of opportunity that we can work together, even though this is not a commercial agreement. It's really ability to be able to take our depth and expertise, share that, mm. and then be able to scale be able to scale the industry and really accelerate um, the transition that, that we believe can occur. So let's talk about India specifically from the point of view of acceleration as well as uh, potential growth. When you talk about uh, the fact that India is on the cusp of a building revolution, what could that mean for you from, from your revenue perspective in India, from your growth perspective in India specifically? Well, let me give you the, the footprint that we have today. We have about, uh, about 8,500 employees. Um, in Johns Controls globally, we have about 100,000 employees pretty much across the globe. So it is a significant part of our business today. It is the highest growth um, that we have across the globe. So we've, we've increased our workforce here by about 20%, 20, 25%, just in the last 18, 24 months. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at um, what we have here, we have 
five engineering centers. And so a significant amount of our engineering research and design, not just for India, but for the, for world. the world actually is happening here. And so it's an incredible um, footprint that we have, not only what we're doing to innovate for the, for the market here in India, but being able to leverage that globally. And then when you look at the, the growth and you see what's happening economically, um, it's very impressive what's happening here within the country. And I think it is the combination of the public and private sector coming together, the alignment on, on the initiatives around decarbonization, sustainability, renewable energies. It's very impressive with how that energy transition has gone here uh, with the percent of the energy that's actually coming from renewable supply is one of the highest in, in the world. And so I think as we think about the progress that's already been made, the ability now to, to be able to accelerate. And so for us, it's localizing. We've been, I'll be you know, celebrating an expansion in, in our manufacturing footprint mm -hmm. in Pune uh, uh, tomorrow, where we, that's where we build all of our heavy applied equipment, water-cooled chillers, air-cooled chillers, air handling equipment that's important for the local market and being able to deploy the type of solutions that we can deploy for data centers. And data centers, given what's going to happen here over the next decade, is going to be a tremendous mm. growth opportunity. And what we do in John's Controls, although it's a great market opportunity, we can help accelerate that market because of the improvement that we can bring. And so bringing our leadership equipment, like even with the, with the new technologies around heat pumps, where heat pumps today with the temperature differentials that you can achieve doing both the heating and mm. cooling, replacing some of the fossil fueled equipment in the building. So when you think about the most sustainable infrastructure, it's electrification of the equipment, which is then deployed with digital and the use of data. And then that is what ultimately then drives the optimization of that equipment and service through the life cycle. And so I think the combination of those pieces coming together for us, we believe this tremendous, not only amount of, of infrastructure growth, but within that infrastructure, uh, infrastructure growth with the value proposition yeah. that we bring a tremendous opportunity for Johnson Controls because of the the, 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 the the differentiated solutions that we bring to the market. So let me pick up on both those points and I'll start from manufacturing <laughs> first because you said you're going to make an announcement on expansion tomorrow. Yeah. So give us an indication of what we're talking about uh, in terms of incremental capex from here. Yeah, so we've been, you know, our whole manufacturing strategy globally is to make sure that we're local for local markets and that we're, we have the right footprint, the right um, technology deployment, uh, the right manufacturing supply chain locally. And that's what we've been working to do to build here because we see this growth opportunity to be some of the highest growth across the globe and that it's important that we're local to be able to serve the local market, uh, both from a cost supply chain, yeah. but then from a speed and execution, being able to capitalize on the demand. And so there's millions of dollars of investment that we're putting in to not only not only the product that's going to be built here, but as important, the manufacturing footprint um, that's going to be localized here. And then that will also enable us to be able to build up a robust supply chain of all of the components that we ultimately utilize to build the equipment that we're going to be building here. Mm -hmm. So it's an exciting time for us. So, so will you then need to set up more manufacturing capacity uh, as you look out the next five to 10 years and given the opportunity that you see, that do you believe you will need to beef up manufacturing Absolutely. capacity? I mean, we look at all of our products and, and the ability to not only differentiate the product from a R&D engineering standpoint, and a lot of that work is being done here but then being able to then have the capacity to be able to produce for the volumes that are, that are going to be achieved. There's going to be significant growth. When you look at some of the key end markets, whether it be data centers, mm. commercial buildings, um, a lot of, um, you know, like I would say institutional government um, spaces that really does play to our strengths um, and how we ultimately can serve those verticals. Uh, is, could you give me a split of, uh, of the kind of growth that you're seeing on the private sector opportunity in India as well as the government side? Because between the center as well as individual state governments, in fact, CapEx is being driven by government spending today. I think, I think what we've done here as we've really led this, this transition of, of getting to smart, sustainable buildings, smart, sustainable, healthy buildings, is educating governments across the globe because it's, it's really understanding not only the, the possibility that we have within buildings, but then the how and how you deploy mm -hmm. the technology and the capabilities that can fundamentally change how buildings operate. So we've done tremendous 
work across the globe, working with all governments. And what we've learned is when you bring the governments together with the, the opportunity, not only with the regulations and the policies and the stimuluses right. that are put into place, getting that aligned to the private sector that deploys the capital, that ultimately drives innovation, drives the capacity, that is what's worked well. And what I see happening here, it's leading by example. It's the government leading by example of being able to leverage the technology and the capabilities, demonstrate how it can be done, and then that ultimately then accelerates the ability to be able to get it more broadly deployed. And I, th I think that is well underway here. Uh, on the engineering side, you spoke about how you've added about 20% more to your workforce here. Uh, on the engineering side, uh, are you going to be able to continue to do that kind of an incremental number? Is that what you're considering? So we're, time? we're a technical company. We're a te you know, think of us as a, an industrial digital company. So the core of us is leadership product, being able to then have a leadership digital platform that ultimately extracts all of the data from the building. And then with that data, creates new outcomes with the application of AI and fundamentally change how buildings will operate, not only operationally for the efficiency and the energy reduction, but also for the occupant, creating a much healthier environment, uh, understanding you know, the, the occupancy, the utilization, and then all of the other functionality that you would expect on a mobile device. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the building, you've got the connectivity to all of the other uh, elements of what you do during the course of the day to make you productive. And so that, when we think about engineering here, that this is our core. And as we continue to expand globally and continue to expand not only our product portfolio, but as important, our digital deployment and how we're now not only extracting, connecting, being able to extract the data, and then with one data set, fundamentally changing how buildings are going to operate. Mm -hmm. That is what we're going to continue to invest here in India. 